Hi my name is Tony Dong. Review the 10.5 inch iPad Pro is much more pro than what it replaces more RAM, great screen, and better keyboard will all shine. Once iOS 11 is out. Nothing Apple has done in the last three years has reversed the iPad's sales decline, or stopped it, or even really slowed it down all that much. But 2017 has made clear that if the iPad keeps falling, it won't be for lack of trying. On the software side, you've got iOS 11, an update that makes iOS 9 seconds multitasking additions look rudimentary and quaint. It adds a distinctly Mac-like application dock and dramatically changes how the device runs and interacts with multiple apps at the same time. The changes allow for much improved window and file management, and you can easily drag and drop content between apps. On the hardware side, the lineup is as compelling as it has ever been for the new buyers and upgraders Apple needs to attract to push up sales. The 329 iPad sticks to the basics, offering people a great first tablet or an ideal upgrade for that aging iPad 2. And the new iPad Pros push the lineup a step further, pairing interesting screen technology and accessory support with performance you would normally expect from a more expensive laptop. Apple refreshed both iPad Pro models this month, but today we're focusing specifically on the 10.5 inch version. The one that has been checked the most visibly. It has a bigger, better screen. It has a better, faster chip with more RAM. And its enlarged smart keyboard makes it a whole lot nicer to work on than its predecessor. It might not convince you that an iPad can really be a pro device, but it makes a much more convincing argument for itself than the 9.7 inch tablet it replaced. And FELTHE 10.5 inch iPad tweaks a few fundamentals of the iPad's design for the first time since the iPad Air came out in 2013. The Air, Air 2, iPad 5, and the 9.7 inch Pro all made small changes, but they all also had the same screen size and resolution, and the same bezels, and the Air design was mostly just a larger version of 2012's iPad Mini, much as the 12.9 inch iPad Pro was just a bigger version of the Air. The 10.5 inch Pro keeps most of the same design language a glass front and aluminum back, thinner bezels on the sides of the screen, shiny chamfered metal edges, rounded but well-defined corners and edges, and the same ports in the same process but changes the proportions and it fits in a screen that's almost an inch larger on the diagonal. It fits the screen in part by increasing the size of the tablet ever so slightly, from 9.4 by 6.6 .6 inches, to 9.8 by 6.8 .8 inches. But the proportion of screen to bezel is also higher than it is in any other iPad, including the new 12.9 inch model, which gets all of the same new features as the 10.5 inch model, but keeps the same design. The 10.5 inch Pro is exactly as thick 0.24 inches and only slightly heavier than its predecessor from 96 pence to 1 pounds and 3 pence. Using it feels mostly the same, especially if it's on a table, a desk, or your lap. It's still a great size for playing computing, since it can sit upright on its smart cover or smart keyboard even if you don't have much legroom and the person in front of you has leaned his or her seat back. If you're trying to use it while you're holding it, though, it's a bit more of a strain than with a normal iPad Air 2. Your thumbs have to stretch that much further to reach everywhere on the software keyboard, and slimmer puzzles means being just a little more careful about where you put your thumbs. But these changes all fall well within the you'll get used to it category. As for other changes, the camera bump from the older iPad Pro returns, and it's bigger than before. The iPhone 7 lens assembly that both the new iPads use takes up more space than the 6S era camera that the old 9.7 inch iPad Pro used. Also, the touch it sensor has been upgraded to the second generation model also found in the iPhone 6S and 7. The only difference is that it's faster. The new screen. Of everything Apple sells, none have screens that do quite as much stuff as the iPad Pros are doing. That list starts with IP3 color gamut support new in the 12.9 inch Pro, returning to the smaller one and an anti-reflective coating, 
features also present in recent iMacs and MacBook Pros. But the True Tone feature, which detects the color temperature of the ambient light and adjusts the display's color temperature to match, is iPad Pro only. Most significantly, the iPad's refresh rate has been bumped up to 120 Hz, twice the normal 60 Hz. The screens in the iPad Pros are the best screens Apple ships, which is appropriate for a thing that's just a giant screen by design. The 10.5-inch Pro has a 2224 x 1668 screen, up just a little bit the 2048 x 1536 in 9.7-inch iPads. The density is identical, so photos and text are exactly the same size they were before. You can just fit a bit more of them on screen at once. The iPhone 6 and 6 Plus and iOS 9 all pushed developers in the direction of resolution-dependent apps, so most apps expand relatively gracefully to fill the entire screen. While using split view mode, it helps both apps breathe a little bit more. That said, the smaller iPad Pro still can't fit two full-size iPad apps side by side. In developer parlance, you can see one regular app and one compact app or two compact apps, the same as on the 9.7-inch iPads. The 12.9-inch iPad Pro is still the only one that can handle two regular apps at once. In the cases where apps aren't written to support resolution independence, the tablet stretches them a bit, making them slightly blurry but avoiding a letterboxing effect. Thank you for watching. For the follow-up, subscribe to the channel yourself here.